I think the, the first rule in searching for meaning in life is to uh, ask the uh, right the, uh, question at the right ecology. He points out an important strategy when employing the four ecologies to understand life. Each of ecologies uh, can answer to right questions. So it's very important in struggling or in searching for meaning in life uh, to ask right question at the right ecology. For Dr. Yaparel, asking and answering the questions at the appropriate level is paramount. For example, we cannot uh, find an answer for our physical uh, problem at the transcendental ecology. Or we cannot find right uh, solution or answer about the uh, social uh, problems at the cultural ecology. While living in each ecology can help us ask and answer the questions appropriate to that ecology, a holistic approach to life makes the most sense according to Dr. Yaparel, because each of the ecologies are related and interdependent on one another in some way. So the holistic approach to life is uh, very closely related to find uh, answers uh, for all ecologies at the same time. So there is a close relationship between these different ecologies. For example, uh, we need to satisfy our primary needs first uh, in order to be able to find uh, right answers, for example, for spiritual ones maybe. So uh, we cannot separate these ecologies or dimensions of life from each other. There's still another way of slicing up reality. Our next guest is a leading thinker in the area of transdisciplinarity. Through the study of quantum mechanics and philosophy, Dr. Bazarov Nikulescu asserts that there are many levels of reality or ways of perceiving and understanding the world. He points out that there are over 8,000 disciplines in the world today. We could look at the world through the perspective of science, politics, art, literature, law, and the list goes on. But he and researchers like him believe that there's another way of perceiving the world that ties all of the disciplines together and yet goes beyond all of them. In 1900, Max Planck made a remarkable discovery that turned the field of physics upside down. Albert Einstein, writing in 1954, described Planck's work in this way. This discovery became the basis of all 20th century research in physics. Without this discovery, it would not have been possible to establish a workable theory of molecules and atoms and the energy processes that govern their transformations. It has shattered the whole framework of classical mechanics and electrodynamics and set science a fresh task, that of finding a new conceptual basis for all physics. Dr. Basarab Nikolescu, president of the International Center for Transdisciplinary Research and a specialist in the theory of elementary particle physics. His interest in the complex and the multi-level nature of reality began with the study of quantum mechanics. The study of the infinitely small level showed completely paradoxical properties. For example, all, the beginning of the discovery by Planck. Max Planck, who gave the name of quantum, quantum physics, of discontinuity in energy. This means that when an ele electron, for example, goes from one level to the other around uh, in the atom, doesn't go through intermediate states, this just jumps from one level to another without passing through intermediate states. A very strange thing, this continuity for the conception of realism, which was prevailing before Planck. Max Planck was so puzzled by his discovery that he challenged it over and over again, but eventually accepted the findings along with the rest of the scientific community. 
His findings were so unsettling because what they ultimately meant was that instead of having a continuous chain of cause and effect, now we had discontinuity, and that meant a new type of causality, and this had far-reaching implications. So what is the story about subject and object? Usually the modern conception in modernity from Descartes. We have the idea that there is a reality there, an object, and the observer can see this object, but he's, the subject is completely disconnected from the object, neutral. He just sees the object, studies the object, and discovers the laws. So it's a dichotomy between the subject and the object. And even in our days, especially in human sciences, uh, people continue to use the same description. While there were new laws that applied to the micro level, they didn't necessarily apply to the macro level, and this was intriguing and unsettling. In other words, our usual scale around kilometer, meters, seconds, and so on, all the laws there at our scale are completely in rupture with the laws which are in the infinitesimal. But when we observe the thing, we have an apparatus, we measure, the infinity is small, and we have to translate what is happening there in our own language. At that moment, we abolish the laws of the quantum level. Werner Heisenberg, considered the founder of quantum mechanics, was best known for his uncertainty principle. In his paper written in 1927, Heisenberg wrote, the more precisely the position is determined, the less precisely the momentum is known in this instant, and vice versa. Some have interpreted Heisenberg's argument to mean that every concept has a meaning only in the terms of the experiments used to measure it. An example of this would be the path of a particle. According to Heisenberg's theory, the particle has no meaning beyond the precision with which it is observed. So for Heisenberg, the orbits of electrons do not exist in nature unless and until we observe them. The founders, big founders, Heisenberg, Bernard Heisenberg, Wolfgang Pauli, Niels Bohr, uh, and many others, arrive at this idea that it is something else than the subject and the object. Something else. What can be something else? An interaction term. There is an interaction term, a unity, not fusion. Of course, subject and object remains different. But there is a unity, a fact that is a thirdness, a third term of interaction between subject and object. So, when we are confronted at our scale with a different scale, it's like saying that a third appears. A third, which is the interaction term between the subject and the object. And of course, this means, on the level of knowledge and extrapolations to other fields than just quantum physics, which is one discipline, right? Just one.